Hello, welcome. Chestnuts are roasting on an open fire. Yeah. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Mm. Yuletide carols being sung by a choir and folks dressed up like Eskimos. Everybody knows a turkey and some mistletoe. Mm -hmm. Help to make the spirits bright. Tiny tots with their eyes all aglow will find it hard to sleep tonight. I'm going to change it up. They know that mommy's on her way. She's bringing lots of toys and goodies on uh, that day. And every mother's child is going to spy to see if mommy really knows what they like. And so I'm offering this simple praise to kids from one to 92. Although it's been said many times, many ways, Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. How y'all doing? Welcome uh, to the Last D Experience. It's about to get real today. Yes, I'm still sounding like a man. <laughs> I just can't get rid of this cold. Maybe because I keep going outside. Makes sense. How you guys doing? Who's up here today? Hey, is it Hikem? Am I pronouncing that right? And CJ, Nathaniel, and Otis. Did I see Ben? What's up, BG? We need to come over here and, and do a shed or a, a jam session or, or something. Hey, Paris. Oh, my gosh. Guys, we're going to get into it today. I got time today because, yes, I do. I don't have to be rushing off like I usually do. I, I hope I don't have to be rushing off like I usually do. I don't know. However, the topic today is, do you reveal hurtful information to someone or mind your business? Now, this is a very, very loaded question. And it's about to get really, really candid because, and it's very touching. You know, do you reveal to someone what their spouse is doing, man or woman? Do you reveal to someone what their children are out in the streets doing or mind your business? You know, do you reveal to someone what their relative is doing, be it aunt, cousin, whatever else, their mother? You know, do you reveal to somebody secret information and sensitive information about what their pastor is doing or has done? Or do you mind your business? Do you reveal to your boss what your coworkers are doing? Or do you mind your business? Whether they're stealing paper, pens, ink, I don't know. When do you know when to shut up? I mean, because that's, that's you know, and I always like to be candid. Hello, guys, how you doing? <laughs> All right, Jack was by humbug, really? Um, Jack, are you saying yes to the question? Because I, I, it, it's not so clear, guys. You know, and I'm going to give several examples, and uh, you guys can chime in. Let, let's do the most touchy one first. You know, um, if you have information, now mind you, it has nothing to do with you. That's the kicker. And even if it, you know, you know, it, but you heard it, 
um, and not gossip. I'm not talking about idle gossip or chit chat or being messy. Hey, Soror, how you doing, baby? I'm not talking about foolishness. I'm not talking about mess, messiness. But you sincerely, you're coming from a place of concern, love, you know, for that individual. And you have very sensitive, hurtful information. Do you run your mouth? You know, and I shouldn't say it like that because that has like a messy connotation to it. Do you tell? Do you tell your girlfriend? Um, nothing you heard, but like, let's say you doing, you was out doing karaoke and you saw your girlfriend's man out there doing karaoke. No, sitting, not singing, but sitting with another woman. Do you say anything? Do you walk up to him and, or mind your business? Or do you tell your friend? Or mind your business. And these days, do you bring, do you take out your phone and, and take a shot? <laughs> ah, you know, you know, that's the time we live in now. You take a, a big a little picture of them right there, all looking all cozy and all kissed up and everything else, you know. Or do you tell and you know, and, and let me say this. Okay, Paris is saying, Oh, if it has nothing to do with me, then I mind my business. But Paris, you know, uh, hold on, Paris, and Jack is still saying, yes, integrity is key. Otis is saying it totally depends on the situation. It does. It, it, it does. And I also feel it, um, I'm yelling, y'all. I'm trying, I'm just talking all loud and ratchet because I'm trying to push past the hoarseness. Um, so I apologize for being loud. But I, it's a touchy situation. I, I just, if we have been best friends for decades or five years, and we're besties, you ought to know that I'm not coming from a place of being messy. You see what I'm saying? Do you tell your girlfriend you saw her husband out with a man? That could be life-threatening. You know, how do you gauge when to shut up? You know, and then if something happens because you have not said anything, could you sleep at night? You know what I'm saying? Do you tell a, a friend of yours or a relative or whomever, and they just say, like, they just joined the church? And you know some stuff about that church, not idle gossip, but stuff to be true. Do you open your mouth or do you let that individual go to the church and find out for themselves? It's so many different scenarios. And it sounds like a simple question, but it's not. You, got, you don't know what mental state people are in. And like me, I wear a mask all the time. People think I'm not going through nothing. I'm going through a lot. You know, but I just choose to compartmentalize my torture <laughs> and my situations. Like, look, okay, I can't fix it right now, so I'm gonna do what I gotta do, or I'll deal with it later, or I, I just can't stress out. Are you not gonna have me, you know, with a headache, migraine, nose bleeding? I can't do that. I have to stop and breathe because I can't take on that stress. And you know, the stress, you know, bring on illnesses and bring back up tumors and all that. I, I can't do that. No. So, but me, if somebody knows something about what's going on with my, my, my children, my mate, uh, or whomever, I would want to know, especially, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So what's going on here? Okay. What are you guys saying? Um, hold on guys. Again, I haven't found my mouse yet, so I'm doing it the old fashioned way. I don't want to, um. Okay, Paris is saying, uh, if telling them helps them, then speak. And she says, if doing so will only cause hurt, then shut up and look the other way. I'll come back to you, Paris. Jack is saying, the only problem is, can your friend that tell can keep your name out of it? I don't like that. I really do. I, that's a pet peeve of mine. And I, maybe it shouldn't be. I hate when somebody came up, comes up to me and go, girl, I heard so-and-so said this about you, this and that. And I was like, well, who? I can't tell you that. Don't bring a bone if you can't put a name on it. I, I just, that's just me. So I can get it straight so people can, you know, be confronted, not in a fighty get, ghetto stuff, but to ask the person, you know, why are you you're lying? And if they're not lying, why are you telling my business? You know, how is this concerning you, dearie? You know, and things like that. Nathaniel was saying, sweep around your own front door. Whoops. Before you sleep around my eh. But let me tell you something. I understand where you're coming from, Nat. And parents understand where you're coming to. I haven't forgotten you, baby. But 
I personally, I can only talk about me because I promised people I wouldn't, you know, put their names out unless they come on here in front of witnesses and say, unless you can tell people's name. So I only speak in my experiences. Um, I have gone through some, and Nathaniel, you know some of it. I've gone through some crazy, hellacious, stupid stuff, you know, um, in my life. And sometimes people told me it was, it, it was going on. And when they told me, I go, okay, give me the details. Who told you? I'll investigate it and blah, blah, blah. That's how I took it. And, and then other times people did not tell me it was going on. And in one particular case, um, it could have it could have taken my life. It could have, it, and it's, it's just a miracle that at the time somebody told me one of my exes was cheating with a someone who was on drugs real bad, and the girl was supposed to have been pregnant. So you know, of course, you know it was no protection, and so. But it was just God just looking out for a sister. It just so happened that he was doing so many other things and being so hateful and mean to me that I wasn't active with him anyway. I was sleeping downstairs in the recliner for like almost a year. That saved my butt, you know, because he was out there having unprotected sex with crackheads, you know. So in a case like that, I was kind of upset that when I found out a lot of people knew, saw him, saw them, knew where they lived. And I had no clue in a case like that. Now, I didn't confront them, get all mad and cuss nobody out or whatever. But a couple of them, I was like, well, you know, sis, homegirl, I mean, dude, you know, why didn't you tell me? And they said, well, want my business. I, you know, hey, hey, I don't want, no, I don't want to start nothing. It ain't my business. But, you know, what if I wasn't already having issues with him? and was not um, celibate and abstaining from him. I could have caught something. And I just thank God that he had it so that I wasn't active with him. Thank you, Jesus. You know, so this is a very loaded question again, I say, because I wanted to know, good, bad, or different, good, bad, or ugly, tell me. Tell me, don't be having me looking stupid out in these streets and I got something or my child selling drugs or my child is a hooking up on 19th street and you don't tell me, you know, and I was discussing it with somebody today and the person said, well, Les, it's, it's, it's a, it's a type of situation. Like if you're close with the person, I can see them telling you, but if your enemy or somebody that's messy or ratchet, um, wants to tell you something, you're not going to receive it and it's not going to go well. So that's what their stance was on it. If you had a good relationship with somebody, you can tell them the sensitive situation. But if not, mind your own business and you never know what's going on in anybody's house. That's what the person today was um, saying. I'm going to see what you guys are saying. Um, hold on. I'm getting to you. Everything is going so fast. Hold on. I'm trying to get to you guys. Hey, Susie and Jimmy. Um, Nathaniel says, God reveals truth. Man only wants to tickle your ear. Yeah, but, you know, I, not all the time, man. Uh, not all the time. Because there have been situations where I, as a human being, had to tell a, 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 a lady one time, like, look, this is happening. It ain't my business. I'm not here to hurt you, baby, blah, blah, blah. But this is happening. This is occurring. And if you don't deal with it or remove yourself from it, you're going to... Um, do jail time, or you can be caught with these items and these things, and they're not going to believe you or care that you didn't know it was in your house, you know? And she was able to, she was like, thank you, girl, good looking out. And she went to go find whatever she had to find, and she cleaned that mess out and cleaned the individual out. See, so you can't say all the time, I wasn't there to tickle anybody's ear. And, and, and in my other situation, the people who told me wasn't there to tickle my ear they were worried for me, you know? So it's a very, 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 very <clears throat> loaded question. And let me see. Hi, Terry. How you doing? Okay. Um, so all is saying, I would want to know, me too, baby, and I will determine how to handle the situation from there. That's how I feel, Soror. Um, You know, especially if you come in humble, you know, and you can tell with somebody being messy. You can tell by their body language, um, their past history. And you dealing with them? Are they messy? Are they messy people? You see what I'm saying? You can tell. 
Hey, Suze, baby, how you doing? Jack is saying, um, I tell you something in confidence. Oops. Hold on. You guys don't. Sorol is saying it's, it's all in the approach, and I agree with that. It is definitely all in the approach. Um, Nat is saying when led by God, it's okay. But Nat, everybody doesn't have um, a relationship with God or our church people. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I made the, the question so general because I'm talking to everybody because everybody's going through something. And a lot of us are in the dark about a lot of things. Me, probably right at this moment. Who knows? You know, um, Jack is saying, if I tell you something in confidence to protect you, I got your back. But do I need to be in the confusion? I know, y'all. I mean, some people just like, look, I'm dealing with my own crap. I'm not trying to be in no drama, no mess, no confusion. I ain't got the time. I'm too old. I'm too tired. I'm not. You know, I can understand taking that stance. But that's just like you being a paramedic or a nurse or something, uh, a first responder. You see an accident on the street happen. And you're like, look, I ain't got time for that and whatever else. I ain't stopping to see if anybody hurt. That's how I feel about that. And you're not even stopping to assess the situation. You know, I think you should assess the situation is so many things at play. What type of relationship do you have with the individual? Who you heard it from? Are they reliable or are they messy dogs? You know, um, how did you hear it? Um, is it gonna put you in a, in a situation of being unsafe or something like that? It's so many things we have to take into account in situations like that. But then again, I still want to know, me personally, Leslie, I want to know if, if my children out there doing crazy crap and whatever else, I want to know, you know, if I had a man I was dealing with and whatever else, and he out there, I want to know, tell me. And like Soror said, and let me assess the situation. Let me go, okay, what am I going to do about this? How am I going to approach this? No, don't be approaching me crazy, but, you know, doing it in love and sincerity. You see what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> Benjamin is saying uh, some church people don't have God. Yeah, they're the most gossiping. <sighs> I didn't, there's a difference between a Christian and a churchgoer. A difference. And Ben is talking about churchgoers. You know, there are some people try to mask gossip with, child, be praying because so and so husband was in Walmart, you know, grocery shopping for some young thoughts, kids. And I know he ain't buying them for his wife and his kids because. You know, we at the church pantry had to give her a turkey, you know, you know. Not that foolishness. <laughs> you know, you can miss me. Don't even approach me with that. Those shenanigans and calm down. I've been told I'm yelling. I don't mean to yell, but this is a very, very sensitive subject. And again, y'all know anything about anything, whether it be me, anything connected to me, anything with my DNA, um, let me know. You know, let me know. I mean, hey, you know, I'm just saying, you know, and also when we're talking about, well, you know what? I always tell y'all, make sure you're cheering and listening. When it comes down to um, intimate things and things you may hear it or things you may know, you know what? I got this thing. And so many times you see people with their wife or girlfriend or somebody with a husband or boyfriend on their profile picture or their cover picture and this and that. And you'll be looking like, yo, home boy is talking to my girlfriend in her DMs. And the wife is, or the girlfriend or the maid is up there so oblivious, you know, so I just can't go out like that, man. I, you never know what nobody is doing. You know, it is something I say all the time. Never say what your children won't do. Never say what your man or woman won't do. And third, never say what you won't do because you don't know what you're going to do until you're in that situation and you're tested. Because the right atmosphere, right situation, you might do something that you currently turn your nose up at. You look up and you be like, whoa, how I get here? And you done done it. So those are the three things I live by, man. That's why I was like, tell me. If I need to know something, tell me. I'm not going to be all hauling all up in your face and this and that and trying to fight you because you're telling me my man is doing or screwing or whatever else. What am I going to jump up and fight you for? 
come on, y'all, we need to get it together. We need to be each other's keeper. We are each other's keepers, you know, and it takes a village. We need to start caring more about one another, not being messy gossips, but, you know, trying to figure out when to talk, when to shut up, you know, when to tattle and when to mind your business. And I'm not talking about barbecue, Becky, and tattle, tail, Tammy, target, Tammy. I'm not talking about foolishness. You know, I'm really talking about legitimate situations that you are aware of. You have been made privy to. Do you tell or do you shut up? Or do you tell a little bit? Or do you tell piece by piece? Do you mail a letter? Do you mail a letter anonymously? I don't know, you know. <laughs> a Sorolia is saying it, knowledge is power. Even it, I'm sorry, it moved. Knowledge is power in every aspect of life. You know, that is so true. You know, I, I it's a hard pill to swallow, but that is so true. You know, I, I, if I don't know, I can't change it. I can't fix it. If I don't know it's happening or it has transpired, or even we can turn the tables around. If you know, I'm going to make up a scenario. If you know that somebody's upset with me because I supposedly said or have done something, if you are a good friend, you need to be my friend, man. If you're a decent person, a decent individual, you'd be like, especially if you know me, anybody who knows me knows that I'm very approachable, very approachable. I don't get stupid. You know what I'm saying? You should be able to come up to me and go, yo, Les, you stepped on Susie Q's toe the other day and you didn't say sorry. And now she, you know, got an order against you. And the first thing I think I go, oh my God, I didn't know that. Whoa, you got her number? Oh, she don't want to get you out the number. So when I see her again, you know, if you see her, give her my number or let me call her or I can contact her through Facebook or however I need to do it. And I'll get that thing right. That's me. That's, I can't sleep at night knowing I have hurt somebody offended somebody or doing something like that. So even in a situation like that, it's turned around. I will want you to tell me somebody is beefing with you. Some I'm in, I've been in beefs. I didn't even know I was in. <laughs> I said, they beefing with me. Well, what'd I do? I said, what? I did what? And one thing that oh, almost said the P word that makes me upset is for you to be told something I said or did. And you know in your good conscience that that sounds out of character for Les. I don't see Les running your name up and down the street or I, I don't see that. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't defend my character and you don't say what I just said. And what makes me upset, instead of that person coming to me and saying, Leslie, you know, blah, 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 you take that bone, you make your own judgment, you crucify me, you are the judge, jury, and the executioner of my reputation and my character without even having a conversation with me, man. Because I'm like this, and everybody should be like, if you're woman or man enough to say something, you should be woman or man enough to take responsibility for the consequences for that and be approachable and open to whoever, whoever you may have hurt. That's just the right thing to freaking do. You know, that's just me. Hey, Robert, what's up, babe? Um, Jack is saying friendship is not part-time gig. That's the truth. I got, mm, I can't say that. I'll just say that's the truth. I almost said something. You know, Ben said, that's the kind of friend everyone needs. Yeah, man. Because, you know, if, if you get one, this is sad, but if you get one good friend in a lifetime, you are blessed because people come and go, you know, some, some of them just come in there for a season, clout chase you know, have the hem of your skirt, whatever else, you know, I, I just, you know, but you know, a lot of things have happened to me through strangers, colleagues in the industry, in the church, in family and whatever else. But I, I leave myself open for conversation. I leave myself open. You know, you would think, don't nobody got my number. And then when they call you one day, you're like, oh, so they have my number all this time. Okay, whatever, you know, but I am very approachable. If you think I got an odd against you, if you think I'm mad at you, if you think I'm beefing, beefing in my own head, I don't know, you know, talk to me about it. Call me. If you don't know how to approach me or don't want to have a face-to-face -face with me, text me. If you don't, if you're not into texting, call me. 
Because I think it's an injustice to be mad with somebody for months, years, decades. You know, it's an injustice to yourself, but they're going on with life like la, 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 la. I mean, don't have a clue. You bitter, busted, upset, trolling their page, mad because they're not doing bad <laughs> without you. That's just crazy, man. It's childish. You know, let me see. I think I missed somebody up here. Oh, it's 424. The time be going so quickly. Good gracious. Oh, my gosh. You know, I'm trying to get everybody in. Um, Jack is saying, a woman I knew. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Jack is saying, a woman I knew I was in love with was at the disco, and my boy saw her. He put me on point, saved my heart from being broken any further. That's a friend. I, 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 I think his friend did the right thing. Um, Otis is saying, this is really something. They say ignorance is bliss and a little knowledge is dangerous thing, but you just don't know sometimes what to do. Hold on. In these situations. And that's why I thought it was very um, important to address this situation because what is happening guys is it is the holiday season. And some of us are having a hard time. I, I just lost my mom, you know, and you know, a lot of people have lost their mothers and loved ones and it's not too kinging about the holiday season, you know, and we're going to be thrown in situations where we're, we're with family members we haven't talked to in decades, years, months, or whatever else. And families are infamous for holding deep, dark family secrets. You're looking around thinking you know what's what and who's who, and you really don't know, and you wait until somebody's deathbed to find out at the funeral they find out. And that. that stuff needs to stop. I don't know if it's just black families. I don't want to say that. Well, I can only talk for black families because I'm a black. <laughs> but I have found that families just hold so many secrets and aughts against each other. When if you just sit down and commune, break bread and talk, you will realize it was a misunderstanding. Someone carried the bone wrong or I didn't mean to do that, or did I do that? Or if I meant to do that, I did that 10 years ago, baby. I've grown, I've grown up, I've evolved. I've become a different person. I apologize, let's move on. Give these people closure. You know, I don't even expect closure for my stuff anymore. You know, that's why I gotta find happiness within myself, peace and joy within myself, and contentment and love within myself. I gotta love myself. And I can sleep at night because I know I have not intentionally that I know of, and I'm sure somebody would be glad to come on here and put me out in the comments, but that I know of, I have not intentionally hurt anyone. That's not my makeup. That's not my character, you know? But I do have one person that I got to see in this journey called life before I close my eyes and die. Because that individual, I did hurt them. Now, it wasn't uh, malicious and it meant to be hurt, but my actions, it doesn't matter why I did it or who told me to do it, my actions almost destroyed this individual. Now that I'm 49, you know, I did that when I was 20. You see what I'm saying? There's one individual in the thousands and thousands and thousands of people I've come by and I know and I've had interactions with. I can only think of one person that I need to see before I close my eyes to say, so-and-so, I'm sorry. I apologize. If he wants to know why it was done or blah, 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 I'm there to be honest, open, candid, and transparent to, transparent to tell him why I did it. You know, not making an excuse. I'm not going to come up there, well, I did this, you know, but I had to because that and that don't, you don't be coming up to people all crazy like that, you know. And I just hope um, he's married now. And even if I have to go through his wife, which that is the respectful thing to do because he's a married man. And I haven't had any interactions with him in 20 something years. So um, if I got to talk to his wife to, and tell her what I want to tell, him and she take it to him. However they want to do it, I am op open and I am humbled before the, um, the individual because I was wrong. It doesn't matter that I was instructed to do this or told to do this. So it doesn't matter. I did it and I hurt them. And that's the one person I got to see. And I hope God makes it a way that or whatever that I will see them or have some kind of contact with him or his wife. 
I can sit both of them down and go, hey, hey, Mrs. So-and-so, um, hey, brother, whatever, I can call names, you know, this is what happened. As sincere as a person could get on this planet, I apologize. I need to give that person closure. They probably don't even know they need closure, but I just want to say I'm sorry. And if everybody took that stance, that we would be a better world, a better people for it. You see what I'm saying? You know, but my last question is, beloved, how come when someone is doing well or doing good or is prospering, looking good, healthy, that don't get around? I know Brandon, I don't know if Brandon's on here or not, Chaotic Beats. He was doing some kind of... um. Help me out, Brandon. Hey, Anthony. Some kind of a uh, rap contest or whatever. And he was almost having to beg people to vote for him. You know, it didn't get out that he was in the contest. It didn't get around that whatever else. But let Brandon be cheating, eating, sucking or licking. Spread like wildfire. Come on now. We got to, you know, we got to grow up. Hey, Sanab, how you doing? Oh, Soror say owning our action is the greatest forgiveness we can receive. Amen to that. Amen to that. Um, oh, just say it's it's really courageous of you to admit that. Oh, definitely. I feel like if you and you know, even if you think something is legit or you have reason to say or do that thing, the fact of the matter is you did it. You did it and you hurt somebody. Your mouth hurt somebody, your actions hurt somebody, your tongue hurt somebody. So you need to man up, woman up, get a pair. And go and if you have an opportunity and apologize to that person, give that person closure. As a person sitting here with all kinds of crap, wounds and digs and knife in the back wounds and, <laughs> you know, physical scars, emotional and mental scars. I don't know anybody who have done some major stuff to me that has given me closure, who even said sorry who even said, you know, I acknowledge I even did it. <laughs> you know, people like to act like you crazy. I don't want to talk about you crazy. Uh-uh. You know, so guys, I'm telling you, like, come on. Um, we need to decide when to say something, when not to say something. I wish somebody was in my ear when I was young, stupid and dumb, you know, saying the right things instead of the wrong things. So like I said, it's a loaded question. You don't know when to say something to somebody if you know something taboo or whatever else, and, or you don't know when to mind your business and shut up. I just, you know, a lot of people are not into God or a higher power and things like that. And if you're not a person that is not led that way, you just need to sit down and if, if necessary, freaking get a piece of paper and pen and weigh out the pros and cons. Should I shut up or should I tell them? Is this life threatening? Is it going to put me in a mess? Is the person going to receive me? You know, child. And don't be telling nobody else. If you know something, keep it to yourself. I, I just don't get that. If you know something, you know, if I know Sister Tree, I don't know, caught HIV from her husband because he cheated one time. Okay. What does it do for me to say that? tell that you get some kind of euphoric or mental nut and just spreading that how does it benefit you to tell that person's business like that do unto others man you wouldn't want nobody telling you that you got herpes from a cheating husband you there innocent or cheating woman y'all i'm just trying to keep it fair across the board you know you wouldn't want nobody doing you like that so why would we do each other so wrong and be so stupid and uncaring and insensitive and just arrogant and just messy it just makes no sense from the president on down. I just don't understand why people won't look at other people as human beings, just simple human beings. You wouldn't want nobody doing nothing to you like that. So why are you doing it to other people? So like I said, you know, it's a loaded question and you really have to weigh the situation, the consequences of you either shutting up because even being quiet sometimes can make it worse. You know what I'm saying? If you had a bodega in New York, and you sitting there, you coming out, you waiting for your ride or whatever. And you see, hear somebody planning like, yo, when this place cold closed, we're going to bust this place up. We're going to rob somebody or whatever else. You just keep that to yourself. It ain't my business. Going on home to the next day, you see 
Bodega owner shot and killed. You could have prevented that, man. So I'm just saying, we're all fairly intelligent people. <laughs> of course, we all need therapy. <laughs> but we're fairly intelligent people. And if you're not that intelligent, you know what hurts your feelings and what you don't want, don't want to happen to you. So treat other people like that. Let's see what's going on right here. Oh, who did I miss? Oh my gosh, so many people. Oh my gosh. Soroyo, um, explain what you mean, baby. Soroyo said um, some things don't require closure, only completion. Can you um, expound on that? Soroyo, can you write that down? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go to somebody else, but um, explain yourself, baby, so we can have clarity on that, so everybody can understand what you mean, okay? Because we all on here just trying to get therapy chat, <laughs> trying to do right by each other, you know? Um, I don't know what you're talking about, Nat. I don't know what, what you're answering. Oh, okay. You're talking about Mother Mitchell used to sad but true, hard but fair. Mother Mitchell used to say that all the time. And they were, and I just didn't pay. Okay. And he didn't pay attention. He's talking about um, somebody we knew back when we went to church together, guys. If you don't know, he's talking about. Um, I'm trying to get down, guys. Bear with me. And we went a little over today, but um, <clears throat> hey, Kevin, how you doing, sweetie? Hey, pops. David, my my pops are here, y'all. Um, Jack is saying, just be still and know God will give you instructions. I get that, y'all, and I understand what you're saying. Um, and I like to be able to reach because I have such a broad demographic, all different ages and cultures and, and beliefs and whatever other, that follow me on this show. Um, and a great number of people, Jack, know what you're talking about, about being still and knowing that God will give you instruction on how to deal with things. But for those people who are not spiritual or religious or into anything, you can, I'm trying to give them practical things as well. The one thing I used to hate about, um, um, a lot of preaching and stuff, people would preach to you, give you the word, tell you what not to do and whatever else, um, the pastor, the minister, whoever's up or whatever, um, or even when they're witnessing to you. But no one gives you the practical tools on how to do it. No one gives you how. You know, they'll say, you know, you know, don't be fornicating and you need to get rid of that man you with and blah, 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 blah. But no one sits you down and go, okay, when he knocks on your door next time, baby, I know you're in love with him. I know you yearn for him emotionally and physically. But do this. If he's there to give you something for the baby, have him hand it through the door if it's money, under the door, or I'm just making up stuff, y'all, or tell him, send his mama, or send a friend. The things I'm saying are practical tools. You got to give people tools, beloved. You got to show people how to do what you're saying they need to do, because everybody don't know. Everybody doesn't have the same upbringing and tools and things like that. So that's why I asked Sororo to expound and explain in detail what she means about everybody, everything doesn't need closure, but just completion, okay? So that's why I'm saying that. It is 4.37 and I'm well over my time. Um, keep the comments going over there. I will, once I get back to doing all my shenanigans for the evening, I do try to sit down and read all the comments and reply to them all. I do try to do that. And I, what I always do also, when I finish these um, shows and videos, I and within a day or two, I upload them to my YouTube channel. And it's simply called The Lusty Experience, where you have to filter through all my Facebook stuff. Everything is right there from, and they got numbers, they're in order and everything. If you want to binge on my shenanigans <laughs> or you're looking for a particular show and things like that, they're all over YouTube. It's called the Lesty Experience. Hey, Missy, how you doing? You know, so I'm like this. There are certain times when you don't tell somebody, if you know her husband is cheating and things like that, a lot of people don't want to mess with that, you know, because it gets real crazy, you know, because I've been in situations where I've told something. They, the, the, the lady got all fired up. The man got mad at me, wanted to fight, shoot, and cut me, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And then she back with him. Or they're trying to fight you together. <laughs> so I had to, I ain't telling another ninja another thing, you know. And then I had a situation where I didn't say anything. 
And the girl was like, Les, why you ain't tell me? You knew? So you D if you do, you D if you don't. So that's why I like brought this up there. What do you do? And how do you know? Hey, we all need therapy. Keep the comments coming. Thank you for being a part of the Les D experience where this is a judgment-free zone. Your experiences, yes, <clears throat> are not looked upon in any kind of crazy way. You know, we all up here trying to work things out, you know, and feed off each other, you know, experiences and everything else and opinions, outlooks and things like that. You know, this is a happy place. We get it all right. Well, we, we try to get it all right. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, check you all later. Love you much. And, you know, and just really, really serious. I don't just do these shows. I don't get paid to do this, but it's needed. There need to be a, a, a conversation had about a lot of things, especially in our community, uh, things like that. We need to look out for one another. You know, you may know something I don't know. I may not know something you don't know. You see what I'm saying? But we're all here to help and feed off each other so we may grow. Yes. So you guys be blessed. Uh, hopefully, we'll be doing a Christmas special on Christmas Day if I can get my kids to cooperate and sing. and. Hopefully, I'll be able to dance. <laughs> uh, you guys get to see what we do on Christmas. Straight foolishness and fun and love. All right, guys. You know, keep the comments going once again. And um, thank you for being a part of the Leslie experience. <laughs> Bye.